I'm Taylor Dill and we're out here at Northwest. Again, we're looking at our moisture for this week um, in this uh, abnormally dry time. Now we're looking at planting date one in soybeans. We uh, dug up a plant to see where our moisture laid here. And uh, while the topsoil is hard, we still see moisture in our root zone and uh, in our soil um, sample we pulled we still have moisture when you get about two to three inches down now that doesn't mean that we don't still need rain however we do still have some moisture left here that's sustaining the roots and up here we haven't seen our corn curling and our planting date four has been progressing along in stage as well so that means that our moisture is uh, still okay and we're not at permanent wilting point yet. Hi, I'm Alex Lindsay from the Department of Horticulture and Crop Science. And today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about crops, primarily corn and soybeans, and their response to drought in early vegetative stages, as this is kind of what we're seeing throughout the state. The most recent map for the drought monitor shows that much of Ohio is in a slight to moderate drought condition which has been leading to some issues that we're seeing in the field, both with new crops being planted, successful germination and emergence of those fields, and also early season drought stress, which is something that we haven't seen considering how wet our springs have been recently. When we think about seeds germinating, seeds need to imbibe roughly half of their moisture content above what is in the seed at the time of planting. So corn would go from 15% at planting to 30%, Soybeans, again, 13 to 25, 26% to really kick in that germination process. And so it absorbs that water from the soil environment. If there's not really soil moisture for the seeds to imbibe, they essentially would just sit in the furrow and would wait until a rain came or soil moisture content became higher. A bigger concern that we have is if the seeds imbibed and effectively started germinating where the radical emerged and the hypocotyls coming out or the coleoptile for corn is trying to reach the soil surface and then the moisture dries out. That could be an issue and a concern because that seed doesn't really have a chance to rebound and recover. Uh, we could see decreased stands as a result of that type of condition. If the plants emerged and we're seeing drought symptomology, short term what we'll see is the plant will start to change how its leaves are bent or oriented to reduce water loss. In corn, they'll fold up because of bulliform cells to try to help conserve water. Also to minimize the amount of sunlight directly hitting that leaf surface, because if you have less light hitting the surface, it slows the temperature increases that those leaf surfaces experience. In corn, we can see these also start to shift in their leaf angle, again, to change that orientation related to the um, light and minimizing stress there, but we can also see root systems start to grow a little bit longer. This is, again assumes that we had some adequate moisture for those plants to actually get established. Uh, it could be an issue if we see that in seedlings. With roots are not properly established, for instance, in corn, we might start to see floppy corn syndrome where the plants look okay, but they're kind of droughty. And then if we get strong winds, they might start blowing over. This could be caused because of poor nodal root development and hot, dry soil conditions. So please be sure to check your fields for this condition uh, as it may be more common this year. Once we get some moisture, be sure to conduct a stand count and assess your final stands uh, because some of those early emergers may not survive through some of this uh, extreme moisture deficit condition. Long term, we could probably, if this persists, expect to see leaf plants with smaller leaf area, shorter plants on the whole. Uh, we could also see changes in the leaf cuticle. They might start become waxier leaf surfaces to try to conserve moisture to some degree. And we could also see a shorter flowering or growing season, again, if this persists further into the future. For soybean crops, we tend to think of drought as being detrimental because of flower abortion. It can also cause flowering to happen sooner in the growing season, but I don't think we're quite at that stage yet. Most of the soybeans around the state, if planted in a timely manner, are in the V1 to V2 stage at uh, their latest stage at this point in time. 
So I think we have a little bit of time before we start to see this concern. Same thing with grasses like corn, we could see some issues with yield and yield development. But I'm not quite too worried about this at this point because most of the corn around the state is between the V1 to V4 growth stage at this point in time. We'll keep an eye on the drought situation and continue to provide regular updates in the event it becomes more severe or there are other things to start watching, especially as the crop begins to progress through its vegetative stages and enters into reproduction.